Today I want to talk about YouTube analytics and give a shout out to my fans far and wide. Now I've got my notes here. I typed this up yesterday and I'm just going to run through this very quickly and save your questions for the end. <laughs> um, if you're not a YouTube channel owner, you might not understand how things work on YouTube. Hold that thought. I'm going to go get some bug spray and just enlighten you. YouTube, which is owned by Google, analyzes views by the countries which videos are viewed and the demographics of the viewer, namely the age and sex of the viewer based on your information that Google has obtained from you. Uh, by the way, that's how Google decides what ads to run in front of our videos. We have nothing uh, to say about what runs in front of our videos. That's all up to Google based on your browsing history and uh, what products, services, and entertainments Google thinks you might be interested in. Except that in the case of my channel, which is G-rated and appropriate for all audiences, including children, they most likely would not run a racy or violent ad before Late Bloomer. Now, our choice is only whether or not to allow ads. And I didn't for the first two years of Late Bloomer. I was well aware back in 2012 that you had to have millions of views on YouTube in order to make any money. So I thought, well, if I'm not going to make any money, why turn people off before I can turn them on to my show? So I didn't because I was convinced from the beginning that uh, Late Bloomer was bound for TV and that YouTube was just a springboard and why worry about that? Why worry about a few pennies here or there? Also at the time, you know I'm an actor and I had a couple of national commercials on the air and so I had the money to pay my editors and composer. But when Late Bloomer wasn't on TV in a couple of years <laughs> and I was still going strong on YouTube, I went to a free class for channel owners down at YouTube, which is uh, not too far from my house down in Playa Vista, and they convinced me to run ads. I'm going to see if there are any continuity people out there that notice something that just switched. And by the way, if you click off those skippable ads that play before videos you're watching, the channel owner gets nothing. If you watch the ad, the channel owner gets a couple of pennies. And if you take action on the ad, if you click through to a website to find out more about what's in the ad, then we get a few pennies more. But we're still talking about pennies here. So that's why you have to have lots of subscribers and millions of views in order to make any kind of real money on YouTube. And a lot of people do. Some good friends of mine are making money. <laughs> As you build your number of subscribers, and if you're in good standing, see, there's that gnat, even with all this. As <laughs> As you build your number of subscribers, and if you're in good standing with YouTube, you will get contacted by a number of YouTube partners each claiming to do a better job than Google can of bringing you revenue. And that's your choice to make. I rejected all of those offers until 2016 when I signed with a, a YouTube partner and, and I got access to a huge free library of music. As everyone using YouTube knows, music rights are the critical element. That's the crux. You have to have the rights to the music in your videos or you cannot earn revenue on your videos. Google has the technology, believe me, to identify almost any tune that you include in a video. The composer or the person holding the copyright to that music will get the revenue for your video. So you will be making money for them. So you have to be very careful about music that you use in your videos. Am I better off? Are people better off going with a YouTube partner? I don't know. I, the jury's still out on that. Um, I do know 
that it's been beneficial for my style of storytelling to have a huge library of free music to, to, to choose from. Because a lot of people have written me and said that they enjoy my style of videos and they enjoy the music. So that's what I'm going to keep doing until I get through all of this content that I shot this summer. I'm still working on May, I'm still working on July, and I'm trying to keep somewhat current on what's going on in the late bloomer garden. Also in 2016 I started blogging. Now YouTube started recommending channel owners to build their audience by blogging. Well first I had to figure out what a blog was, but I started small and I started on the Adobe mobile app Premiere Clip and I said when I got into this whole business of creating a, a show on YouTube that I would never edit. I would leave that to the professionals. But <laughs> when I started vlogging, it was about the same time that YouTube's analytics changed and their algorithm now, they're looking for more and more content. Because guess what? For every video that you upload, Google gets a chance to make money on it. So, of course, they want lots of videos. And quality is less um, important to them than the amount that you upload. So, I was always big on quality, not quantity. But in 2016, I started vlogging as well. So, and it was about that time last year that my editor of four and a half years got a better deal, got full-time work. Uh, it was time for her to move on and I understood that. So I took on the duties of editing as well. <laughs> That's why I'm working 60 hours a week now. So when I started Late Bloomer, I planned it like a TV show. It's always been my thinking. Two episodes per month is what YouTube was recommending to upload back in 2012. So I planned a 20 episode season, two episodes per month with a two month hiatus, just like a TV show. So you have time to regroup and think of new shows and what might be interesting to people. But the popularity of vlogging happened to YouTube. So viewers wanted to see more content from their favorite channels at least once a week. And that would have doubled my output. And because obviously I pay my team per video, suddenly I found myself having to take my friend Patrick Dolan at One Yard Revolution's advice to edit my own videos. In addition to revenue that you can make through Google Ads, many channels now are on Patreon, which is a crowdfunding site for artists and content creators. So of course I'm on Patreon and if you're interested in being a patron of this channel, go to the link in the description below and sign up. And I really need you and I would really, really appreciate your support. I wrote on here about the 60 hours a week. I work every day and night. If I'm not traveling and I consider that work, I don't take a day off because I'm either gardening or editing or shooting. And uh, I'm managing a website and all my social media and I'm doing it all by myself. Of course, your social media is Oh no, this is not attracting bees, tell me. Of course, your social media is a huge part of the success of your channel getting the word out. With all the content out there, how do you find a loyal audience? Someone who will tune in to every video that you upload, no matter the content. So I have gnats and bees and hummingbirds flying around my head, <clears throat> just so you know. With so much content out there, how do you find your loyal audience? Someone who will tune in to you on, and watch to the end. It's very important that you watch videos to the end. YouTube tracks all of that. And that's another way that they measure the success of your channel. And the success of their channel, in their opinion, is why they wind up recommending you on the right side column when you're watching another video, you see all these recommendations on the side. The way that Google decides to recommend those is based on a number of factors. And number one being your watch time. That's even more important than views and subscribers. So I work very, very hard to put quality content into every minute of my videos. In fact, 
in my late bloomer shows, I had bloopers at the very end, the very end. So you watch all the way to the end and you get rewarded with a laugh. If you're cutting my videos short, you're missing out. <laughs> I don't start out strong and then just blah, blah, blah. So yeah, how do you find that loyal audience? That's the $64,000 question. That used to be a game show on TV. I have a few of those, but not nearly enough to make this channel sustainable. And by sustainable, I mean breaking even financially from month to month, because I do still have my sound editor. I mean, I would not be making videos without Chris. Not only does she bring her expertise to my videos, and you can hear the difference if you listen. She's also this great sounding board because when you're a one woman show and you're doing everything yourself, it's really great to have another set of eyes and ears to say, wait a minute, you really should put this here or, or maybe you should leave that out. Uh, or this sounds, I can't fix this sound. <laughs> very often happens when you're just running and gunning it which is what I do uh, very often the sound is um, not good and believe me people who say they'll fix it in post this is a big thing that they say in the movie business when filmmakers are starting out oh we'll fix the sound in post okay let me tell you something <laughs> sound is just as important as picture in fact, maybe it's even more important because viewers will forgive a sloppy shot if the camera jangles or, or you, you got a bad cut here or whatever, but if they can't understand what the person is saying, the words coming out of your mouth, they don't forgive that. When I went to see Pirates of the Caribbean when it first opened, there's a line that Johnny Depp's character Captain Jack or whatever, <laughs> Jack Shadow, what, whatever. Uh, his character says, in close up, at the very end of the movie, it's one sentence, like four or five words, and I could not understand what he said. I said, what, what did he say? It was like the punchline to the movie. <laughs> I, I couldn't understand it. So maybe it was my ears, Disney, but uh, still. Now, let's talk about my fans. I would not continue this work without my fans, and, and they're all over. Most of my viewers, obviously, are from the United States, and then there are the other English-speaking countries like uh, uh, UK, Canada, Philippines, Australia, and India. Then it gets interesting. Even though the numbers are very small, I have viewers in Indonesia, Malaysia, Vietnam, Brazil, Japan, Thailand, New Zealand, Macedonia. I mean, I'm going to have to look up where is Macedonia. South Africa, Saudi Arabia, Trinidad and Tobago, Netherlands, United Arab Emirates, Germany, Jamaica, Israel, Poland, Singapore, and Turkey. I, I mean, I just find that absolutely amazing. A word I know I use way too much, <laughs> but um, it's humbling to think that my attempt to inspire people to grow their own food, take back the responsibility of their food, and uh, be kind to Mother Earth is reaching such a wide audience. One of my oldest and best friends is from Trinidad, so I want to give a shout out to anyone watching in Trinidad and Tobago. I appreciate you. And uh, I visited my fans in Netherlands this June, so I really am grateful that they and the ones in Germany are watching. And I still have all those videos to edit, and I will. And I used to have a young man named Conrad in South Africa who was watching. And I know a few gardeners on Turkey that write to me on Facebook. And I feel sure that Puerto Rico would be on this list had they not been devastated by Hurricane Maria. Right now, Puerto Rico is struggling. They have no electricity. They, they have no water. They, it's a desperate, dire situation in Puerto Rico. And I want to give a shout out to all, well, I hope they see this. One of them, Viviana Del Manzano, the last I heard from Viviana 
She had water, but her family didn't, and she was sharing her water with her family. I am very eager to hear from you, Viviana, and I hope that you are all well and safe. I also want to give a shout out to my uh, Northern California connections and all the people that have been impacted by the the uh, horrible, horrible California wildfires. You know, two months ago, British Columbia was just raging in fire, and and right now, Portugal raging with fires. And Ireland, there's a hurricane that just hit Ireland, Hurricane Ophelia. So with so many natural disasters in the world, it's ever more important to live sustainably with a light footprint, to conserve energy and be kind to Mother Earth. Now, my hat is off to all my friends who live off the grid. I, I wish I could. I live smack dab in the middle of one of the biggest cities in the world, Los Angeles and I try to live as sustainably as I can. And if you would like me to cover that in a separate video, how, the measures that I take in my lifestyle here in Los Angeles, I'd love to, let me know. If you learned something and enjoyed this video, please give me a like. You have no idea how important that is, which is a thumbs up. Take a little moment to just click that thumbs up if you've enjoyed or appreciated the work that the content creator has done give a little like. That's a sign that we're doing, we're on the right track and it's an encouragement. If you don't like the video or you didn't find it of interest, just simply go to another one. Don't put this on there for forever to be because you'll forget. If you give a, a thumbs down, you'll go and you'll, you'll go do something else and you'll forget all about that thumbs down. But that content creator wears that forever until you go back and you take that and make it that, or at least nothing. So try to encourage your content creators, the, the ones that you enjoy their content, by giving them a thumbs up. Everybody asks for it, but it's really important because if you have nine likes on a video and you have one dislike, that means to YouTube, you have a 90% uh, like rate or, or acceptance rate or and that 10% stays there until you get more and more of these. So then if you just have one down, it really throws your numbers down. You've got to have a lot more of these to build that back up to 91%, 92%, 99%. You can never get to 100%, never, not with one thumbs down. So think about that the next time you think about giving a thumbs down. And please don't thumbs down this video. I'm just trying to inform you. So today is October 22nd, and that's the birthday of my oldest son, Walker. And I want to give a happy birthday to Walker. He's starting a whole new job up in Minnesota. So he's going to be moving up into near Minneapolis. So you may be seeing me in Minneapolis in the, in the coming year. So my plan is to stay put and to edit straight through until Christmas. <laughs> so I'm going to be working very hard to bring you the best possible content that I can do on my shoestring budget. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. I hope this was beneficial. If you want to know more, we'll go into YouTube a little deeper. Um, but just consider this YouTube 101.